What's going on everybody? <clears throat> I'm making this video right now to make a tutorial for you guys on how to use the new script that I'm about to release tonight. It's called the Sauce Script and it's for Photoshop and I do believe it also works in Photoshop Elements. Um, I haven't personally tested it the results from uh, Adobe Photoshop here to Photoshop Elements. Maybe the algorithms in the software is the same and would have the same output. Um, I assume it might. I'm not quite sure, but someone is going to test that tonight and I'm going to take a look at their photos compare them on uh, Photoshop and Elements and compare how they are processed. So, anyways, I don't have any scripts loaded over here. Um, they're actually technically actions in Photoshop. So the script is an ATN file. So I'm going to close the actions window here and just show you guys how to get the actions window and how to load the script in and how to process the photo with it. And then I'll bring you guys over to Lightburn here and show you guys um, what to do from there before you send it to your machine. So first things first is here's our photo we want to do. I am going to be doing this on let's say uh, a 12 by 12 black tile. A white tile that's been painted black, excuse me. And we are also going to invert the image. And I add, added a little something into this script where it'll ask you if you want to invert the image or not. If you want to, you press continue. If not, you just press stop and you're done. And then you can save the file and be on your way to uh, send it over to your machine through your laser software. Okay, so um, maybe some of you guys have seen this photo that I already burned last night on some of that um, Gemini Duets plastic. Yeah, it looks like birch wood, but it's not really wood. It's plastic that turns black, basically. It's made for lasers. Very professional end product. Um, high quality substrate. Excellent results. And I'm going to keep that stuff in stock over here to uh, start providing for my customers uh, that option. So, um, Anywho, 250 DPI, that photo that I did last night that you guys saw this one here. Uh, only 250 DPI. It's really simple. Uh, it's really easy to burn all of the details in a 250 DPI processed photo. Um, the higher in resolution you go, the harder it's going to get. Your machine settings are definitely going to change. Um, typically for me, when I go move up to higher resolutions, I need less speed and less power. And you just got to uh, finesse your settings to match exactly what you see in the processed photo on your substrate. If you're burning too much away in the blacks, then you're going too slow or you have too much power or maybe it's your focus. Um, if you're getting your blacks and those look good and your whites aren't showing up, then you need to slow down and probably start looking, you know, after you slow down and uh, adjust the power. I adjust my power in micro changes, one tenth of a percent at a time. Um, you know, when I first start off a photo, I might start the bottom at 10% power, but up here, by here, I might be up to 20% power, but from here 
to where I started, it's all tiny little micro changes going up until I start seeing the balance between the blacks and having details in the blacks and the whites and having details in the whites, you know, creating the balance. And then once it's balanced is when you can really start fine tuning your settings to just start showing all of the small details that make up the photo. Um, there's only one spot on results somewhere in the haystack of all the settings. So asking somebody for their settings is probably not the best idea, especially for photos, because everybody's machine's different, you know, different wattages, their tube lives are different. Even if they have the same machine as me, which a couple other people do, um, their settings aren't the same because mine will fire at 2% minimum power and theirs will fire at, let's say, 8% minimum power. Well, my 2% power is probably equal to their 8% power and vice versa. So, you know, there's a lot of variables in there that determine the actual output of the power of the laser. So, um, yeah, so, you know, just start with a good speed. 170 millimeters per second is typically where I start out at. Um, and don't change your speed. Only adjust your power and start off at a very low power and probably low enough to where you know it's not even going to mark. Okay? And then once you creep the power up as you're running, you're going to start seeing more and more details popping up, you know, instead of just here and here and the bright white, you know, that's obviously going to um, burn stronger than a dark black where it has just a little bit of details in it. So you just barely got to pierce through the black. So you're trying to create a balance there. But anyways, as you're bumping your power up, you're going to start seeing more and more details start showing up, okay? Now what you're going to want to do is keep on doing that, okay? And, and we're going to be on a, a, a white tile painted black, so I'm probably going to keep bumping up the power until I start seeing, okay, I'm starting to burn things away now. You know, the, the whites are too white, and I'm burning all the small little black details away that would make this photo spot on. So you're going to want to turn... Micro step your your settings up, your power up until you're past perfect. And then after you're past perfect, you know you're past perfect. And on the bright side, you've only gone one way. You haven't traveled backwards or forwards, changing your power, your speed, your settings, your resolution, uh, maybe even to the point of uh, blaming the process itself. Okay? because the frustration can get pretty high with photos. But if you work from bottom up, one direction, only keep, your, keep one speed and only increase your power as you go up until it goes past perfect, and then bring your power back down to where perfect was. Okay. Now that you are burning the photo spot on, and you're not satisfied with running at 170 millimeters per second, even though uh, photos are an art, and it, it, it takes time, okay? Um, <clears throat> but with this process here, this is only 250 dpi. The, the process has been made to edit the photo without sacrificing your quality end result for speed okay so yeah 170 millimeters per second for 250 dpi you can you can go much faster than that and hit deep 250 dpi all day with your two and a half inch lens you know but anyways after you're burning spot on and you found where perfect is and your blacks and your whites are balanced um then it's time to go look at your brightest whites and make sure it has little fine black paint details left over 
that you're not burning them away. And then you're going to go and look at your deepest blacks and find where there is a lighter shading and make sure the laser is actually piercing through those deep blacks just as the processed photo shows you there's detail there okay now if you're not getting through those blacks just enough now you, you since your whites are already perfectly balanced and your blacks are just about there you can't increase the power anymore otherwise you're gonna blow out your whites okay so what you're gonna do is you're gonna slow down your machine and when it slows down it's going to be able to fire in those extra dots um, because it's traveling over at slower. So it's, it's going to have basically have more time to fire that detail in there. Um, <clears throat> when you slow down, there's a chance that, you know, it might start firing too, too deep and then you're blowing out your whites again. So you might actually have to drop your power by one or two tenths of a percent to rebalance it back out. Okay, but you can't do any of this that I've just talked about until you work your power settings up and get to where about perfect is. Okay, where you're getting all the details. And then you can micro tune it even more. And, uh, you know, that's where being passionate and having an OCD kind of helps you out because I can't ever personally leave good enough alone. I could be watching the the best photo I've ever done burning, including this one that I did last night, you know, there's a couple tiny little flaws in it that only, of course, I see, but I try to go for perfect, and, you know, not knowing where perfect is to begin with is, will leave you in a sea of traveling this way, traveling that way, a lot of back and forth guesswork, okay, so just cut the guesswork out, and start with 170 millimeters per second and slowly bump your power up. You know, you don't have to bump your power up only one tenth of a percent right here and go one tenth of a percent all the way up until it's perfect. You know, after a while, you're going to be able to judge. You're going to say, okay, I'm going to bump it up 2% and then it'll get me a little bit closer and I know it's not going to bring me over the edge. You know, so you're kind of budgeting with um, the knowledge you've gained from the past and watching photos burn so you'll know you know maybe you, maybe you can bump it five percent maybe ten percent you're gonna say oh this is way off this has got to go ten percent more you know and then you'll see get you got to be patient you got to be patient you can't just let it scan two lines and say oh i need to change the power up 15 percent okay you, you don't know what it's doing when it scans two little lines i mean i'm pretty close to knowing that that quick but you just never know and never ever 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 trust your focus gauge um, they don't they don't get close doesn't cut it for photos you gotta try to get that focus spot on spot on and you, you'll know when it's right and if, and if your machine has the ability to drop the z-axis or raise it while you're running then before you press start on your controller to start your job, first press that speed key on your controller on your machine, and then set that speed to one millimeter per second and press enter. Okay. Now don't frame the job out because it's going to frame. This photo here last night was 16 by 11, and if you frame the job out. You know, it's going to be moving one millimeter per second, and it's going to take a long time. And you'll sit there for a long time while it goes around a whole 16 by 11 photo. But if you do make that mistake, and you uh, press frame, and it, you know, it's moving one millimeter per second, you can just press escape twice on your uh, keyboard, on your uh, machine, and then uh, quickly press speed and bump the speed up to like 91 millimeters per second. Press enter. And by the time it gets to here to make the next turn, it'll start moving 91 millimeters per second around the rest of the photo. Um, just because, you know, there's so many little things that you find that annoy you throughout doing all these photos. Or not even a photo, per se. 
um, this technique for um, finding your settings will work for everything and it will make photos by mastering photos you're gonna learn so much finesse and how to control your machine and make the do make the machine do what you want it to do because that's how it should work um, you're gonna learn so much finesse that all the vector work and all that stuff where you're just engraving a piece of wood to say hello or whatever that's all gonna be so easy but you're gonna discover after you start at a slow speed and keep bumping your power up you're gonna see how it affects the substrate the shading of the wood you know how deep it's going you know we're you know moving 150 millimeters per second versus 300 millimeters per second and the shading that in turn causes you know uh, I see a lot of people masking their their plywood and that 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 masking is expensive. I used to be in the vinyl business for 10 years. I, I still am a little bit, but my machine's just collecting dust in the corner, you know. Um, it's... I, I kind of lost my train of thought, guys, so bear with me. Uh, we're getting back to the vinyl business. Oh, yeah, the masking tape. It's expensive, and you got to buy a wide roll, you know, 24 inches wide or whatnot, and, and you got to waste all that time masking everything or... Or even putting a wet paper towel or a newspaper on a on a on a glass to engrave. You know, when you get 400 glass orders, you're not going to want to sit there rubbing dish soap on it, letting dish soap dry, or trying to conform newspaper around the taper of the glass and have it not get one wrinkle because if it gets a wrinkle, it's going to mess up your whole engraving. You know, you're spending all that time farting around when you could have just made it simple and started with one speed and see what happens as you climb up the power ladder and don't be afraid to go full blast you know see what happens if you don't know what happens up here you're never gonna know where perfect is so you gotta you gotta find find those points and you gotta blast through them just to see what happens you know in the very so I'm chatting away. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just trying to make a, a really solid video for you guys, um, describing just what's running through my head. Um, trying to think about what I'm thinking, you know, when I'm looking at a photo, and you know, or finding the right settings and whatnot. You know, just trying to simplify it for you guys. Um, I've been down this this rabbit hole a long ways. And uh, have discovered lots of ways to be much more efficient. Um, speaking of efficient, again, this photo is only 250 DPI, and <clears throat> it's not going to suffer in quality in the end result like normally. If you take a 250 DPI, take a photo and make it 250 DPI, you know it it looks pretty terrible. But this one here, I've uh, maintained keeping the details in the photo um, through through various testing and micro changes of the process <clears throat> all different kinds of photos high quality photos wallpapers 3d photos low quality photos you know your, your typical Facebook photos I've tested this on many substrates anodized aluminum, enamel aluminum, painted aluminum, yellow to black plastic, white to black pl plastic, black to white plastic, blue to white plastic, white to blue plastic, um, birch wood looking plastic to black, painted tile, wood. Now speaking of wood, um, Couple of you guys probably saw my photos on the uh, cherry and maple and plywood over the last few nights <clears throat> on, on real wood, not a uh, not the full plastic wood. But uh, I tried something that that you guys may have heard of before is um, baking soda and water. Now I went and grabbed a spray bottle, and I've tried this before, <clears throat> but the end result was always just way too dark. So, well, that's because of the process. <clears throat> I 
because the way you process a photo and set the colors up and how it actually translates from visual on a computer screen to <coughs> excuse me the output of your laser is a night and day difference and processed photos for uh, laser engraving they frankly they, they look really ugly on screen and a lot of people say whoa does this look right yes it looks right trust the process just work on your machine settings because I could send you guys this photo that I did last night and a hundred people could burn it and you're gonna have a hundred different results and then you're gonna have <clears throat> my result in there also okay I know my result is spot-on as close as it can be I mean there's a couple tiny little flaws that bother me but the point being is that that's because everybody's using all different kinds of settings <clears throat> And some are close to spot on, some aren't, some are far off. Some people would call the process garbage right away and jump to a conclusion because, frankly, uh, there's just a lot of haters out there that hate on a guy that works on these processes and, and sells them for 20 bucks um, and they blow away $400 software. You know, go, go hate on that. Go, go hate on that. Somebody's charging four hundred dollars for something that that this just blows away okay I've used that software before I started with it and I just wasn't happy enough I was never happy enough my dad was always you know he was a printer his whole life and he's like oh you can do better even if I said hey dad check out this photo you know this is like the 20th one I've showed him already and, and each one I've separated in, into a group of these are these are good these are good and then uh, I narrow them down and pick one to show my dad. And then he says, ah, you can do better. That thing's a laser. It's so accurate. Yeah, I mean, that, you, that looks like a cartoon, you know. So, and uh, as much as I didn't want to say you're right, you know, he, he was right. He was right. So, you know, I've really put in a lot of time into my machine operation and all worked out all those variables, you know precision focus clean lens clean mirrors you're gonna a level bed you're gonna want all that stuff right off the bat <clears throat> otherwise you're just shooting yourself in the foot to begin with or maybe if you throw a piece of oak in your machine and oak has wild grain you know it's not a very good substrate for photos you know so you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot right off the bat in the beginning with the substrate choice for uh, the results you're expecting so but you can pretty much burn a photo on just about <clears throat> anything with the right finesse you know obviously uh, each substrates gonna have its maximum output and quality anyways um, yeah so anyways here's the photo we're going to make this 250 DPI. I'm really sorry for talking your guys' ears off. Okay, so 250 DPI, it was originally 72. I never, ever, ever, ever pay attention to the starting number. I don't care. It doesn't matter in my book. Uh, it could be 32. I don't care. Um, so my tile is 12 by 12, so I'm going to make it 11 inches wide. Just to be safe. I have resample checked, preserved details, enlargement. I just always keep that the same. Um, I haven't experienced with, experimented with reduced noise, but this will make your your photo as smooth as possible. You know, it takes the grit out of it, and maybe that's a good thing for some photos, most photos. So we'll just keep that. This works. I haven't felt the need to come farther on with this. So press OK. Let it change its size. And here we are. And now we are going to... Uh, I'm going to show you guys how to run the scripts. So technically in Photoshop, they're called Actions. It's an ATN file that you're going to be downloading from my website. 
and it will be in zip or RAR format. And after you download that file, you're going to go ahead and right click on it and press extract to, and then you're going to extract it to, you're going to pull it out of the zip archive by extracting it to a folder on your desktop named scripts or something. Just remember where you put those files during extraction. Okay, so now in order to run these actions, we need to find the actions window. And it's not out anywhere in sight, so you're going to come up here to the top menu, select window, and you can see right here actions, and there's no check mark next to it, so it's not active. We're going to go ahead and click that. Here's our actions window. Now we need to get the actual, the sauce script into here. And you do that by coming over here to this little menu, drop down, load actions, and I have it in desktop and new script Photoshop folder, okay? And here's the script. This is exactly what it will look like for you guys as well. So this is exactly what you will be looking for. Ends in ATN. And press load. And it will pop up right here. Okay. And now we already have our image size and set to 250 DPI. Feel free to go higher in resolution. Um, it gets a little more challenging as you go higher. But it's uh, more a more rewarding end result if you're burning all of, all of the details. Okay. Okay, so now the, the play button is right down here, but it's it's blanked out. Well, just uh, do what this says here. The saw script, highlight me, then press play. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and press play and let it do its thing. Now, here's a pop-up window here. You're always going to press continue. If you press stop, it'll just stop and won't continue. Um, you can get rid of this if it becomes a nuisance by... Um, dropping this down here, expanding it, and you'll see it right there on top. It says stop. Uh, you just uncheck that little check mark next to it, and it will never run again for you. Now, after this process is done, it's going to ask me if I want to invert the photo. Okay, so we are going on white tile painted black. So naturally, when the laser hits that black paint, it's going to burn it away and reveal white. So we're going to want to the laser to engrave the white. So yes, we're going to invert the photo. Press continue, and we'll go ahead and invert it for you. Okay. Now I'm going to zoom in here, and you can see, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Invert it just so it looks more normal to your eyes right now. Uh, I'll go ahead and, and zoom out again. Now, at this zoom level, 36%, it's looking funky, okay? And now, as you go out, you see it starts to look more normal. This is uh, what we're shooting for on our end result on tile. I'll go ahead and zoom in and show you guys um, all the fine details that you're going to look for when you're burning. And that's everything. You see, you see all, this is your brightest whites right here. You see, that's your brightest white. There is absolutely no detail to burn here. So you're going to want to watch this screen zoomed in probably at this level and where your machine is currently burning and find these areas and zoom in and look okay this should be 100% white on your tile okay but it's got to be balanced to where you're still getting this little detail in the deepest blacks if that's not there if that's missing or if or if this is you know, not 100% white, you don't have enough power or you're moving too fast because 
you're leaving black behind here because it's not burning it all away. And over here, you're not getting through the blacks because you don't have enough power or you're going too fast. So it's the opposite end of the spectrum, and that's the balance you're looking to burn. Okay? Now, <clears throat> these legs, this might look like it's a lot of detail and it's really dark, okay? But it's when you're burning it, it's really not, and it's actually going to be a, a white leg, okay? But all these little fine details you're going to see, you're going to see peeking out in the detail if you're burning it right, okay? Okay, so uh, do not mind how the process photo looks. Trust the process, and uh, you'll be golden. Now we're going to go ahead and save as... Bug Halloween Tile 250. And, uh, you know, for those of you guys that have OCD or a uh, higher curiosity to what's going on on the screen, um, these are some of the different photos I've tested out with the making of the script. That's just some of them. I'm not the most organized person and can keep things in, you know, coming to this folder when they should be. I'm just more of, hurry up, let's go. So here's my one from last night that we did. That's 16 by 11. Here's our new one, Bug Halloween Tile, 250 DPI. I'm going to press save. Now on this screen, it's going to say, make sure it's one bit, and it's Windows is selected. You know, for some weird reason, your Photoshop might default to this or something when you install Photoshop. So just make sure this is right. It probably is. Press OK. And now we're all set to move over to the laser software. I'm going to press Control-I to bring in the photo that we just processed here. Bug Halloween 250 Tile 250, I'm sorry And voila And uh, this is a, a pretty good depiction of uh, what our end result is going to be at this zoom level So right about there is perfect That's uh that's what we're we're looking to burn right there. Very as close to this as you can get. Now you can see the legs look much whiter at this zoom level. That's because they really are. You know, when you get in all crazy, you know, it looks like it should be almost black, but it's not. It's deceiving. Okay, so very simply here in Lightburn. Open up your settings. Um, I'm going to go back and redo this save because I inverted the image back. Now, if you were going on wood or something, you would leave that there. You would leave it just like this. We're going to invert it, and I'm just going to quickly save it again. Go back to Lightburn here. And load in the new one that's already inverted. Now, since the photo is already coming in inverted, you will not want to activate negative image because if you do, it's just going to invert it back. And that's not what we want. Since it is already inverted, we are going to turn off negative image. I'm just going to start with these settings for the heck of it. I don't know... Uh, what's going to happen. It should be pretty much in the ballpark of uh, um, where it should be, probably. I'm guessing uh, I could possibly even go up to 19% uh, power, or I could be down by 5% power. So, this is uh, not a good example of practicing what, what I was preaching earlier about uh, finding your best settings. 
but you know you get a feel for it over time so I feel this is gonna get me started in a good place and if not uh, we will quickly uh, correct it and uh, work our way towards perfect the next important thing is you don't you don't have to really change the DPI here because when you use pass-through mode it's going to read it the information from the photo itself that we processed at 250 dpi so it's going to know it's 250 dpi whether it says it or not but i just always go ahead and deactivate pass-through type in the resolution that we processed at and then reactivate pass-through mode and now uh, you uh, simply send it over to your machine uh, bug hollow, bug hall, okay. Let it send it over. And I actually have a pre painted 12 by 12 tile that I can run a little demonstration on. So uh, stay tuned for the result of that. And I will get this script re released real quick here. This is the, the video that's leading up to the release so thanks for watching everybody thanks for uh listening to my rambling on but i hope you learned something and you're excited to uh explore all the new possibilities now thanks guys